Hey guys, it's Andrew from Collective Intelligence, and today I'm doing something that I haven't done before. It's a collaboration video with other YouTubers. So, Saiga reached out to me and asked whether I wanted to be involved in this series. And the premise is he's going to make a kick and bass. Uh, and then the next person's going to make the drums, which is myself. The next person's going to make something else, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a bunch of YouTubers. I'm going to link to all of their YouTube uh, channels in the description below. Uh, but a couple of people of note, uh, Dash Glitch is involved. And shout outs to a couple of the Collective Intelligence guys as well. We've got Dada and we got Shep uh, and a couple more in there too. So you can be guaranteed that you're going to get a huge amount of really useful information if you watch through this whole series from start to finish. And uh, we're going to take a look at the drums right now. So let's jump into Ableton. Okay, so here we are inside of Ableton. And this is the kick and bass that Saiga made and passed on to me. This is what it sounds like. Hundred and thirty five BPM, and I'm going to make some drums. So I'll start with making a MIDI track, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go drum rack, drag and drop it. So now I have a place where I can drop a lot of samples, and I'm going to use the Future Phonic sample packs um, for my drum sounds. And the reason I do that is because there's a bajillion different hi-hat sounds out there and so uh, I just limit myself to 18 different sounds rather than the billions that exist. So I grab all of these and I drop them in the one rack and then I make a MIDI clip and I change this to quarter notes so I just play it on top of the kick drum. The hat will play on top of the kick drum and I am going to go in here and I'm going to play some so that I've got one hat playing once and every time it plays it's on top of a kick drum so I can get an idea of how it sounds as my on hat so the hat that plays on the beat so let's have a listen and we'll pick out some of the ones that we like the sound of and we'll remove the ones that we don't really like the sound of Okay, I like these first three. I don't care about all the rest of these. Whatever. See you later. Okay, cool. We got that. Let's fold it so we're just seeing these. Turn the pencil tool off. Um, so. This is going to be... Maybe four will be the on-beat hat. Let's have a listen. Nah, it's this one. It's this one. This is the one. Consolidate. <laughs> And we're going to name this on hat. Okay. So that's the on hat. Now you, number three, I'm going to drag you out and put you on your own channel and you're off hat. And uh, I may actually decide what's the name of this one. 
crispy closed hat. Oh, very, very sophisticated name for the crispy closed. Um, we'll chuck it over there. Cool. So now we've got the off hats and the on hats. And I'm going to right click and go 16th notes. And you're going to go there. And I'm going to unfold you. Okay, so we're going to put these three. So the on hat would fall in this position and these will follow. Let's have a listen to how these sound. Okay, I like it like that. That sounds good. And we're going to roll that out. And let's have a listen to it just by itself. Brilliant. Cool. Great. So um, that is going to be a little bit rigid for this groovy track that we're making. So I'm going to get the shaper box and we're going to go volume and I'm going to change this to quarter note. So the length, um, like every kick falls uh, on a quarter note. So um, we're going to shape a box to that as well. And let's have a listen to this volume envelope on these off hats. So it's just like when you're pumping your kick and bass to side chain them to each other. I'm side chaining the hats to the kick drum. So let's have a listen to it with the kick and bass as well. And then let's add the on hat. Okay, fine, fine. And next we're gonna go ahead and get an open hat. So we'll go back into precious metals, open hats. I think there's just, this first one sounds pretty good. You can't hear my preview, unfortunately, unless you're listening through the microphone. Um, just pull a few in so that you can hear them. Ooh. Okay, so we have this one's nice. Okay, so then that one goes on the third. And I'm going to chop that and put a volume fade on it, like so. Let's have a listen. That's a nice, strong, open hat. Okay. So then we're going to do another little trick. We're going to do this. Boom. And then we're going to go boom. And then we're going to have a listen to how that sounds. Loop. Okay. So listen to that. As opposed to. So we can do interesting things like that. And I think I'll alternate between the two, like so. All right. Let's roll that out. Um, and then what else do we want? I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go open hat. So we got all the hats. So um, let's make that red too. We'll make another MIDI channel. And this time we're going to take a snare. And I really like the snare. 
So let's pop it there, pull it in. And I, I already know because I'm intimately familiar with this snare that I will need to EQ it a bit. Um, but for now, I'll just play it loud and proud, have a listen to how it sounds. The fluttering open hat is interesting, but it can also be a bit intense for me to listen to. So let's go snare, and we'll color, ooh, ooh, we'll color it red. And then, cause, oh, 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 why am I doing that? Let's make them all red. Let's have a listen. Man, they sound so much better when they're red. Holy fuck. Unbelievable. Um, so let's get an EQ and have a listen to the snare. I like it. It's a weighty, a weighty snare, but being overweight is bad for your health. So let's trim some of that fat. Okay, so I'm actually just purely just doing a low cut. So it's pretty simple. Okay, let's do a few more things. Let's group drums. And we're going to go in here. We're going to delete these sends, but we're going to go new return send. We're going to go sup internet. Um, we should name that responsibly drum verb because otherwise we'll get really confused in the future when we're looking at that and trying to figure out what the hell it's for. Um, we're going to go Valhalla room. We're going to go Use whatever reverb you've got. Um, you don't need to have what I'm having. Use what I'm using. Um, so pretty delayed. No, nah, don't want to hear about you. Um, but I do like all of that. That's fine. Let's go 100% wet and have a listen to it. And play from where you can actually hear some sound. All right, so it sounds like it's in the bathroom. So let's turn it down. Whoa, 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 not that, the sand volume. Okay, so at negative 15, I can hear it, it's obvious. I'm like, oh, yep, it's there. I'm gonna pin it back a bit more. Let's go back to negative 17, and then let's play it. It's there, but I'm going to turn the sand on and off and you use your little ear drums and have a listen. It's adding some liveness to it and it's putting it in an acoustic space because otherwise it's just a dry old room and we're all looking at each other sideways and feeling a little as though we're in an unusual acoustic space. So here we are with these guys. Let's have a listen. Going to do a very minor bit of panning. Pan, pan, and I want to pan at one over eight because they're playing sixteenths and I want to have it so the first hit is out to the left the second hit is out to the right but I don't want it to go all the way that far I'm going to mix it in very gently I really don't want much movement
Okay, so now what we should do before we go any further is we should probably get the, the levels of everything right. So I'm going to pull, and this is something that you technically, you would do this at the mixing stage, right? So I'm doing it now just because I'm going to show you a technique that we're going to, is going to involve like bouncing audio and stuff. So um, for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to mix my drums as best I can in this tutorial. Um, so this hat sits on top of the kick. So what I'm going to do is I pull down the volume. I'm going to turn the bass off. I don't want to hear the bass. I'm not interested in the bass right now. Um, I'm just going to listen to the kick. And we're imagining that kick is at like negative six decibels or negative 12 decibels or whatever your rule of thumb is for your headroom. We're going to imagine that the kick is already set at that, that level. And then the on hat, is going to get mixed to the volume of that kick. So let's do it. I'm going to just slowly turn up the fader until I think that I've got it at a volume where I'm like, yep, that seems appropriate. There feels okay, but I'll keep playing with it. Maybe around there. Sometimes it's good to close your eyes and just kind of feel it out that way. I'm going to say negative five. I'm going to try transposing it just a little as well. Okay, don't overthink it. Negative seven sounds all right for now. Off hat. Let's bring it up to match the on hat. Now that open hat's a real sharp boy. Let's bring it up. Okay, so it's not sharp on my ear at that volume and it's very present. I hear the sound fully. But now what we want to do is we're we're going to pan this hat. I'm going to pan it 10 to the left, see how it sounds. Cool. Yeah, it feels like it's off to the side now. Um, headphones, you'll be able to tell better unless you've got good monitors and a good sound card to hear what's going on. Um, let's bring up the snare.
Okay, cool. So let's say that we're happy with how this is all sounding. Even if you think it sounds terrible. Let's just presume. Okay, cool. So obviously the pattern is boring. And it might sound, you know, acceptable to those people that want to just put in a drum pattern and don't really want it to be of any interest. But once you get to the point where you don't want to just be mediocre and you want to try and push every element to its maximum, you can start doing stuff like this. So this is what the tutorial is about. The tutorial wasn't really so much about what I just did. That's pretty boring and simple, but this is where it gets interesting. Okay. So um, we'll start off with shape a box. Okay. So shape a box, we used it before we used it to like volume, uh, basically just side chain, right? We used a side chain. Now what we're going to use it to do is chop or repeat certain parts of this and let's just double click on the first one and have a listen to how it sounds okay and I'll skip through a few of them and when I land on one we'll uh, we'll talk about it What I'm going to do, I'm going to set up this and I'm going to record things onto it. I'm going to record that snare loop. Okay, and I'm going to remove that noise at the end. I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. But, you know, that is a nice... Oh. <laughs> that's a nice little... Um, I'm going to go control, control J. So that's an alternative snare groove. And all it's doing is moving the snare slightly, but I didn't actually have to go in and manually do it. So let's go ahead and listen to all of this again, and I'll turn all the other drums on. Okay, so this one, for example, is quite interesting to me. I'm going to record it. Groove one, baby.
I'm not finding anything else of too much interest here and I don't really need too many examples, but let's just try some, some other little kind of things, see what happens. That's really cool. It's got a really different color to it as well from the original drums uh, that we made. That's very cool. Let's keep going, see what else we can find. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other, Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper can do some really interesting stuff. So if we just put it on Gatekeeper and let's have a listen. Straight away. I like it. It's pulling out some groove that doesn't exist in this already using the existing hats that we've got. I'm going to record that. So have a listen to that with the kick and bass as well. Nice, it works. That's good. Let's go and put that down there and have a listen to them together. See how that's starting to work together nicely there. 
these guys for sure. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just put that aside. Let's just keep flicking through here um, and find, yeah, just anything else that sort of works. Cool guys, so I suppose by this point in time, you get a really good idea of what the process is. And all of a sudden, uh, through just sort of flicking through these different presets, I've got all sorts of unique grooves that I would have never programmed. Or if I had programmed, it would have taken me a hell of a lot longer. And you'll notice here with this one in particular, I heard, oh, okay, I can hear what's happening with the hats there. I'm going to turn the snare and the open hat off so they don't come through at all. I'm just going to record that out. And now I've got some nice hats by themselves. And then they lock in really nicely with these other hats. And then the groove is complete with the snare. So it's very easy to start making all of these little building blocks and you start piling them all up and making very interesting grooves. And if you get the volume balance of them and the panning correct um, at the start, you can use all of this in your final production, bearing in mind that the panning and that sort of stuff probably will get modified a little bit because some of the shaper box have like filtering and panning. You know, it does adjust it slightly as well, but I just figure like I mix it 
perfectly at the beginning. Well, not perfectly, but you know, whatever. Um, so that at least I've got the peace of mind that I've got those drum sounds sounding as good as they can be. Um, and then any of the processing afterwards, if the dynamics change, yeah, I can do whatever I need to do to, um, get everything sitting nicely again, but mostly everything sounds pretty good. Um, even after the effects are plastered on it. So let's hear it one more time. And uh, yeah, not forgetting as well that we can then send this back into the sand with the drums because uh, I didn't record it out when we were doing it that way. Cool. All right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed uh, watching this video. Continue watching along the series as the other producers add their videos to YouTube. And I hope you learn a lot from the full series. Uh, it was an honor to be asked to be part of this video collaboration. And I'm pleased to have been part of it. Hopefully this was fun for you guys and you can go and use these techniques to make your own really interesting and groovy drums. So I'll see you guys in another video. Take care of yourselves.